Hello, I'm Lee. Uh, I'm currently homeless. Uh, I've just come out of this place, which is a uh, homeless day centre called Catching Lives. It's a really good. It's actually a really good place. We run a day centre uh, for people who are homeless, uh, so most of our clients are street homeless, rough sleepers. Um, we provide food, we have a laundry, we have a mental health team who work here to uh, help any of our clients who have mental health issues. Um, we have showers, we have um, all sorts of different people who come in to try and help help our clients with their, with their various issues. It's been really, really helpful. It's been, um, the, having a shelter over my head has been um, life-saving really, I suppose. It's, I just, um, and a place to wash my clothes. The churches, they provide shelter over at night time. Um, I use the showers, um, the pool table and the food. So pretty much uh, bedding and you can find um, every now and then you find a nice pair of jeans or something like that in the, in the laundry so it, it's quite it's quite helpful it helps me because I, I come in the warm with my dog I'm drinking coffee shower washing do my laundry and I know everybody and the staff are brilliant it's cute it's good yes I enjoy cooking, so that helps, but also just helping people with a completely different life situation as to mine. So every time you come and then when you when you serve food and you just see the people's faces light up, especially when they have the choice, because a lot of the time they don't have the choice of where to live and the conditions that they have. So for them to have the opportunity to choose what they eat, kind of thing, that's great. They took me on because of my background. I was a rough sleeper for five years and I am a recovering alcoholic. So I you know, I know the lifestyle. I know what it is to spend that amount of time on the streets. I, I was talking to one of the management and, and it turned out that end of March is when they were lose the funding and finish it. And I think, <coughs> I'm only saying this because I want to stay in Canterbury and I need these services mm -hmm. to survive. Well, I don't need it to survive, but it makes things easier. And they've got funding up till March. If they don't get refunded, it's going to close. They have to, you're not funded. Just everyone getting ready to go to the shelter to sleep for the night. Including me. Uh, in the big blue bags, you have a blanket, a quilt, a pillow. Some of them had little blue mattresses, like really thin things. This is us all walking to uh, the place where we'll be sleeping for the night. Right, basically, this is the church hall where we'll be staying and sleeping for the night. All the duvets and whatnot in them bags. People just moving everything around, getting their own space, sorted out, finding their cots in. Number nine, I've got it. Um, what, what made you ladies volunteer to do this? <laughs> oh, yeah. I've got no better to do on a Friday night. <laughs> what, no bingo? <laughs> Cheek! <laughs> well, listen, there's nothing wrong with bingo. I've never been to bingo in my life. You've never been bingo? It's fantastic. I would advise going. And you, sir, are you a volunteer? Yes, indeed, I am. And uh, what, what made you want to volunteer? Oh, I time on my hands. Okay. I thought I'd come down and do a bit. Uh, you help in the community. That's good. You help in the community. We try and do a bit, don't we? Yeah, that's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Appreciate you. A lot of people would appreciate it. They won't say yeah, it, but they do. That's fair enough. Okay. This is home for the night, I guess. Peace out. Well, I'm in the toilets in the church where we stayed last night. It's half seven. Uh, slept but didn't sleep um, I think that's the same for a lot of them to be honest a lot of them will wake up all stiff from <laughs> zombie fight but I don't blame them they have been on the floor I don't know what anyone's doing I don't know what the plan is 
but all I know is I've got to be back at the day centre for five o'clock. Oh yeah, we see positive outcomes, particularly this time of year when we're very, very busy and we've got a lot of people staying overnight. We've, we've seen a couple of positive outcomes a week, and that's people being accommodated, perhaps getting back with family, perhaps getting jobs. Um, yeah, you do. You see, yeah, it's not always the case, but it's certainly enough of the time it's a case to, to warrant us being here, yeah. Old well, Catching Lives got me in touch with uh, Porchlight, and um, Porchlight ended up sending me off to a couple of other places to get housed and then I'm now in Porchlight down here in 106. This is uh, the hostel in Unruh Fields. Obviously you look, don't look like a hostel because people go, oh hostels, they look like run down places of crap. It's just a building, lots and lots of rooms where people generally live. Amat has a square of houses, an array of houses, all different ones, and it's just a shared accommodation. But they have staff because there are a lot of drunk alcoholics and drug takers and vulnerable people there uh, so yeah you get to see a bit of hostel life uh, you get to see inside in a minute I'm just waiting for my dad to come open the door dad where are you? well this is my room uh, I was uh, homeless until the 28th of December due to alcohol um, I feel a lot better now like I've got a roof over my head I can do my own shopping, my own cooking. I've got a bit of self-respect. Um, living homeless is horrible. You know, uh, it strips all your <laughs> it strips you right down to feeling like you're worth nothing. Um, I got help because I ended up in hospital after a suicide attempt. Um, Need to breathe with drive all nights and uh, they that put me through a detox and everything like that. Um, I found a uh, porch light up and it still took a few weeks to get this place but yeah just this room gives me a feeling that things can work out a bit better you know. We take our, our role in the community very seriously. Um, our clients know what to expect from us but we also have um, rules on what we expect from them. He was an 18 year old lad who um, I had to ban because of some of his behaviour to, um, to staff. Um, and other clients, and I did, you know, and I had the conversation with him outside, and he, he cried, he started crying, he said, look, he said, if, if I can't come here, he said, I haven't got anything else, and, you know, and I may as well just end it all, and what he then went and did was he took a massive overdose of paracetamol and vodka, and he died three days later of liver failure, and that is probably the hardest thing I've had to deal with. It's self-evident, it's a need that is unsupported by Canterbury City Council. Maybe they believe we attract people to the town who otherwise wouldn't be here, but they would be somewhere. Um, so this is why our funding efforts must continue. They were funding up till March, and it'd be nice to try and sort of like um, get people together that users of the system and try and do something well. Instead of just relying on donations and that uh, from people, the bank whatever, put ourselves on the line. Mm. I and mean, I, I walk all day every day. Mm. And just do something. I'd like to put. I'd like to do something so I can make a few quid to put into this place mm. because it's, it's done me. It's helped me right so. I, I'm planning to. Be, I've always said when I'm 50, I'll, I'll settle down. I'm 50 in 10 months. This is what I want to do with Canterbury. Even though I'm still on the streets, if I don't get somewhere to live, I'll stay on the streets, don't really me. But I'd like to see this place done proper and up and running. Yeah. What an ironic song for a homeless person to listen to as well, Paradise. Because that's all we do dream about, is Paradise.
a nice song, do you not think? Listen. Oh.